I believe we can start the session. So. Yes, welcome to the next session, um, which is uh, about the EOS interoperability architecture and fair data aspects. It's um, a session which uh, will be divided into three sub-sessions, breakout sessions, uh, after half an hour from now. Um, we will use uh, the next 30 minutes to uh, introduce into the breakout sessions um, by uh, three speakers. Um, first, I want to remind you that the sessions will be uh, the sessions will be recorded also the breakout sessions and will be made um, available afterwards and please stay muted and keep your uh, video off uh, during the presentations. Um, you can ask your questions uh, in the chat and um, um, should get them answered either by uh, colleagues or um, by the speakers. Um, these are the three sub-sessions that we are planning uh, for now. So the, um, the overall idea is that um, the um, interoperability uh, has aspects, general aspects of services across uh, different domains, different um, provider domains are to be combined. Um, so they are, and also the interoperability between um, uh, services and core services play a role on the one hand side. And on the other hand side, there are um, interoperability aspects to be tackled with regard to resources and especially the data resources. So the fair data implementation here plays an important role as well as um, and as a part of that um, metadata interoperability. So we have uh, actually um, two uh, breakout sessions with regard of that and one breakout session here mentioned in the middle um, on the um, architecture and interoperability guidelines that have been developed um, in the context of the EOS Cup project being uh, proposed to the EOSC. Um, I will briefly introduce the first speaker uh, for the first breakout session. It is Javi Lours, Lours uh, of the UK uh, Data Service uh, and uh, representing Shock here. Um, uh, Javi is a repository and uh, preservation manager at the UK Data Archive, uh, which is a lead partner in the UK Data Service, which is a SESTA member. Um, he's working on the shock project, uh, mainly on trustworthy digital repositories, uh, and is also involved in that uh, in the similar area in the FAIRS FAIR project, and uh, leads that the SESTA Trust Working Group. Um, Harvey, please, it's your turn. Hi there. So hopefully you can see my screen about now. Yes, um, we do. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'll be providing a brief introduction to the FAIR data implementation, uh, the aspects covering extending the portfolio of EOSC services with FAIR data repositories. And I'm Hervé Lors, as has been mentioned, from uh, both Shock and the UK Data Service. Um, the two presentations you'll see in the breakout in a little while are uh, the first one, integrating EOSC services to enable FAIR principles, and secondly, uh, shock repositories, core trust seal, and FAIR. Um, first of all, you'll hear from our colleague uh, Olivier Rouchon, who's uh, from CINES and uh, working on the EOSC Hub project, covering the integration of EOSC services to enable the FAIR principles. Um, this will be probably an introductory and more practical session to, to look at some of the key components um, of, the, uh, of the systems here, uh, followed on by something that's a bit more standards based, I would expect. <clears throat> uh, the key focus here is looking at long-term preservation and FAIR. Uh, long-term preservation, as you'll see here, from planning to collecting, processing, publishing, preserving and reusing data is just one phase in the research data lifecycle, but, but a critical one. 
Um, and within that phase, it addresses most of the principles of FAIR, um, particularly through the use of persistent identifiers, uh, managing provenance, ensuring authentication measures are in place. But I think as with all of these aspects, there is room for improvement. Um, and one of the key aspects here that, that we'll talk through in both presentations really is that um, it includes a time parameter, which is not yet considered within FAIR and the, and, the, um, and the sort of turning FAIR into a reality reports that we've seen prior to now. Um, Olivier's report will be looking in a little bit more detail at some of the underlying services uh, that are coming out of uh, EOS Cub, uh, how the ETDR that he is uh, managing as part of CNES is uh, being built into that portfolio of services, uh, looking at the issue of risks, both in terms of knowledge base, formats, media, technology, uh, the key aspect of quality assurance and how you provide that as a service. Um, the policies that need to be in place to ensure that digital information remains available and understand understandable over time. These are two key aspects here. Um, and how kind of CNES and EOSC hubs catalog has now been integrated into beta access, beta safe, beta handle, beta find into this sort of new ETDR model, which is providing a preservation service uh, within the catalog. Um, you'll see a lot more detail about that at the point. I'll be following that up, looking at SHOC, uh, the repository support program that is coming out of SHOC, um, and different elements of core trust seal and FAIR. Um, <clears throat> taking a step back up to kind of the wider vision of, uh, of the EOSC at the moment. Two of the key aspects that you'll see here across repositories, people and objects, um, are the increasing work to be able to do object evaluation, both automated and manual, um, and place these on digital objects, not just at the repository phase of the life cycle, but um, throughout the different phases of the life cycle. But across the theme here, digital preservation or repositories, the repository as an actor here is, is, is the maintainer is, is a key concept. Um, Put most simply, and gone to in more detail in the presentation itself, um, we'll be looking at um, the interactions between a repository which contains its objects and the multiple collections that might be represented there, and how uh, the object is influenced by being contained by a repository. Um, one of the uh, lenses that we'll look at this through is the core trust seal, which is a core level baseline trustworthy digital repository standard. Um, which provides 16 requirements uh, covering organizational infrastructure, digital object management, and technology. We won't go into these in detail now, but we'll cover broadly the different aspects and the influence that these have on the object context that they provide. Core Trust Steel has been around for a while, <clears throat> and in the end of this introduction, I'll just show a, a diagram which you'll see on um, both of the presentations that Olivia and I will give today. Um, this is some of the emerging work to map uh, the core trust seal against the FAIR principles. Uh, the principles here have been mapped not just directly against the, uh, the conceptual uh, requirements originally provided, but also against the RDA FAIR data working groups uh, indicators, which provide a little bit more granularity uh, and information about how we can, how we can interpret, apply, and eventually define metrics and tests for the alignment between FAIR and the core trust seal. Um, you'll see here that there is a strong relationship between the two. Um, and we'll be looking at, through the work that Olivier is doing, in uh, integrating those services which deliver different aspects of this. And uh, through the work that I'll be presenting, uh, looking at the different, different ways that a repository can provide a context that really enables the fairness of data. And as you'll have seen briefly in Olivier's presentation, which I'll go into in more detail, how um, the core trust seal plus time element, the fair plus time element, really gives us an assurance that data will remain preserved, available and usable for the future. So uh, I hope to speak to you further for those of us who can uh, join that session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Javi. Um, the next speaker uh, will be uh, Giacinto uh, Don Vito, uh, 
Jacinto, you can al already share your screen while I introduce you. Um, so Jacinto will share the uh, breakout session on architecture and interoperability guidelines. He is uh, from INFN. Uh, and represents also EOS Cup here. Um, he's INFN senior technologist, uh, the technical coordinator of the EOS Cup project and the chair of the technical committee in EOS Hub. Um, he was the technical uh, coordinator um, of the Indigo Data Cloud project and uh, in the Extreme Data Cloud uh, EU project. And he's also INFN representative for the Italian Elixir and LifeWatch joint research unit. And he is also work package leader in different uh, national infrastructure projects um, with the aim of implementing um, uh, distributed computing platforms for scientific applications in physics, Elixir, LifeWatch. So please, um, Giacinto. Thank you, Jonas, for uh, this nice introduction. I hope you can hear me well. Yes, but you uh, show currently um, not the full screen, just for your information, but uh, we can yeah, see Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, that, that, that's just to be sure. Uh, I don't have any surprise in not thank working, you. sharing, etc. Well, okay, thanks. Well. So um, I would very uh, briefly introduce uh, uh, the topic of the parallel session we will have uh, at 12 o'clock. Uh, basically, here we will talk about uh, the uh, service composability and interoperability guidelines that we are working on in the context of EOSCAB, but uh, even further um, trying to uh, uh, join also other effort and uh, uh, stakeholders in this uh, initiative. The main uh, focus why we are working on uh, uh, those uh, topics is because, in our opinion, going uh, uh, towards a seven integration and composability framework, uh, giving uh, those uh, guidelines that we are uh, proposing will facilitate and are already facilitating in a lot of uh, communities uh, the exploitation of the EOSC services, but also this uh, help uh, the developers to combine the, use, the usage of uh, different EOSC services together. This means that at the end, uh, the, the scientist, the researcher could compose their own services in a much easier way uh, just because, for example, they rely on well-established and uh, uh, well-supported uh, uh, EOSC compliant services for implementing uh, their solutions. Just to make some examples, obviously having uh, uh, the possibility to rely on uh, a federated and common uh, services uh, give the possibility to easy uh, interoper interoperate at level of AI or assessing protocols or monitoring accounting and those uh, kind of stuff. Uh, which is the uh, main uh, objective here is to propose the adoption of standards in terms of uh, uh, well-known both protocols and APIs. And uh, uh, with this approach, the idea is to support end-to-end possibility of the service. Um, just to make some very quick examples, we have already different um, examples of uh, uh, those uh, um, uh, those activities. For example, there is a, a thematic services already in production that is made of different EOSC services already available that they are joining together in order to provide a more complete and easy to use uh, high level services, for example, for the data analytics, like uh, the DODAS thematic services, or even at the higher level, if you have already uh, use of, uh, usable services in a specific community context, like uh, uh, the uh, earth observation environment, you may compose those services together in order to have a more advanced uh, scientific workflow already ready to use instead of uh, writing everything from scratch. In order to, to make this effort, we started with a very general approach in how to define a reference architecture. Basically, we use the approach of defining building blocks uh, with the basic elements, very simple mm, definition, uh, the scope of these building blocks, which, is, which are the feature, which are the standard users, which are the APIs, etc. This kind of approach is useful because we can use the same 
exactly the same approach for defining federation services together with the common services that are much more ready to be used services, but even uh, community uh, specific thematic services. And all those services could be really described in the same approach, obviously providing different information. Um, the, the general way we do this work is that obviously we start defining uh, those building blocks. Uh, we start defining the technical specification uh, for each of the building blocks. We go back to share those information with the community, with the people involved, uh, gain more experience, uh, involve uh, external people, try to use this feedback uh, to improve the description of uh, uh, those building blocks. How the building blocks is uh, composed, uh, basically, first of all, a building blocks describe similar services. So not a specific one specific services, but similar services. They uh, all together are interoperable, provide similar functions. And um, for example, uh, have concrete examples. I mean, concrete services running into the EOSC that could be described. What is composing um, a typical template for a, a given building block? There is an introduction where we describe which is the function, the main function of these building blocks. Then we provide a reference architecture for the services, how the building blocks is made uh, eventually internally and uh, uh, provide information about which are the adopted standard from that building blocks. So eventually giving uh, official reference to official standard, etc. Then we provide information about uh, interoperability, how other services could interact with these specific services, how um, these specific services could interoperate with others, etc. And then at the end, we have examples of solution already implementing that specification. Uh, so to, to make a more visual uh, description of this, at the end, we will have a definition of um, functions via those building blocks that could be used in order to develop, for example, a new thematic services. So you pick in the list of the building blocks the feature you need. And then you know how to interact with that specific feature, which are the APIs, which are the standard, which are the protocols used. And eventually, if there is a service that could be joined with another because they are, I don't know, compatible interfaces, et cetera, you know this from the description. And then you can eventually uh, bridge together more than one services in order to uh, develop uh, your uh, thematic solution. Uh, we already have provided uh, quite a good list of uh, description in the official web page of EOSCAM project. You see here the link and you will see there there is a lot of categories, which we call thematic areas, uh, cloud compute, for example, HPC, HTC, metadata management, etc., etc. There is a lot of those. And in each of that thematic area, you will have eventually more than one uh, building block, depending on the complexity of uh, each of the thematic area. Uh, here, uh, there is um, uh, two examples of uh, uh, requests for feedback. We are um, asking the community involved uh, or exploiting those specific services to provide uh, feedback on our um, building block uh, definition. So this would help us to improve the uh, definition and to have a more um, widely uh, supported uh, description and eventually increase the, uh, the number of services that are somehow uh, using the same interoperability guidelines. Thank you. Obviously, there will be uh, much more details in the uh, parallel session, specifically devoted to uh, three different uh, thematic areas that are the uh, compute, cloud compute, uh, pass orchestration, and uh, um, data access uh, uh, and analysis. Thank you. This was my uh, initial introduction. Thank you very much, Giacinto. We have then the next uh, speaker is um, Marie Clemola. She's a development uh, manager at the Finnish Social Science Data Archive. 
from the Tampere University. Uh, she's also representing uh, Shock. Um, she has 20 years of experience in digital data preservation and open science. And she's leading the SESTA tools and services working group. She's a member of the core trust seal board and the DDI Alliance expert committee. She has participated in several European uh, social science and humanity research infrastructure projects and at the moment she is active in the EOSC Nordic and Shock. So Marie, it's your turn. Marie, we don't hear you if you speak. You're muted. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can you uh did you see my screen? Yes. And can you still see it? I mean, the PowerPoint presentation or? Yes, works well. And okay, we can hear great. you. Thank you. Thank you, Johannes. Uh, very happy to be here today. Uh, so the third presentation uh, uh, in our parallel sessions will be uh, hey, sorry, about- Sorry, just to stop you. I think that we see a background now. It is uh, okay. the trees. I'm sorry, I thought this is part of the presentation, no, sorry. No, but it's a nice view from where I live, my, so this is Finland. <laughs> my fault. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, Irena. So now. Yes, great. Uh, so we will, uh, I have two screens and I'm sorry. Uh, so the third parallel session will be about metadata interoperability. Uh, shock and beyond and basically I, I think it will be about standards meeting reality so uh, it's uh, this is very uh, practical presentations we will have by myself and uh, by Claudia Martens uh, and, and uh, just as a background uh, uh, I, I'm sure everybody here knows these fair principles about interoperability. Uh, so basically, uh, we will have uh, research data objects uh, or metadata objects, uh, and they can be interoperable only if, if the uh, metadata and data are machine actionable. And uh, I mean, in today's session, we will focus on the metadata aspects. Uh, metadata should uh, utilize shared vocabularies, uh, ontologies, and um, yeah, metadata should be uh, syntactically possible and also semantically machine accessible. So a lot of uh, demands here and a lot of requirements. Uh, and I, I think that, uh, well, uh, work in several projects, like uh, I've also involved in the Nordic EOSC project, and we've been doing a verification uh, work there. And it has shown that many repositories have uh, problems, especially with their uh, interoperability aspects. And this is a very demanding field. Uh, so in, in our session about metadata interoperability, SOC and beyond, uh, we are not going to tackle everything. We will have a, a very, uh, in a way, a narrow view on interoperability. We will be talking about uh, a metadata format diversity, uh, the use cases uh, for domain-specific metadata, and uh, as well as for common standards. Uh, we will be, uh, I, I especially will be talking about the forthcoming conversion hub we are developing in the SOC project, and uh, Claudia will focus on uh, EOSC hub and uh, enhanced discoverability. Uh, across the research areas uh, and, and, and further developments. So it's uh, going to be a very practical session and we are hoping to get a lot of questions and uh, uh, from you and also uh, we hope to have a good discussion. Uh, we, we want to know what is useful for researchers, uh, what is useful for research infrastructures and, and I mean, just basic things and advice hints. Uh, and we do have already thoughts on how to integrate metadata uh, from all scientific domains. Uh, there will be different standards and, and so on. Uh, 
uh, we will also, especially Claudia, will focus on P2Find uh, and, and share issues and experiences from P2Find work uh, uh, and, and how to support various metadata schemas and standards. So I think this will be very uh, practically focused session uh, and uh, I'm hoping to see many of you there and uh, also participating in the discussion. I think you will need to go to the auditorium and then choose another room uh, for the room for this metadata interoperability session or any other room you want to go into. Uh, but really hoping to see you there uh, in the, the next, I, I think, five minutes or so. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much, Marie. Um, so we are pretty well in time. Uh, I'm just checking if someone already asked a question in the chat. No, this is not the case. So then I would say we use the time to switch to our breakout